How you doing out there in YouTube land? This letter coming at you from the wild wild west. Today we're just going to do an update on my EDC drawer. And um, I was talking to one of my friends on the internet today that lives in Italy. Giancarlo. The master of arms. At arms. And um, I was telling him about you know we we're talking about knives and I was telling him I want to sell some of mine, you know, maybe in a couple of years or whatever. I'll put some of them up for sale, thin out my collection a little bit. But anyway, when we talked about, you know, what knives we actually do carry and stuff, I just want to make this little short video because I haven't done it in a while. I haven't done it maybe in a year or so. And uh, update my EDC drawer. These are the knives that out of my collection, which I don't even know how many knives I have, but these are the ones I actually do carry. And this is a drawer. That goes in my um my uh, little it's like a little thing that sits on top of my dresser and it was where I keep all my knives the knives I carry every day my before I leave the house I always carry a knife and this drawer gets opened up and I choose from this drawer and decide which one I want to carry for the day but these are my favorites these are my absolute favorites from cold steel for EDC for me if I want to EDC a big knife I EDC one of these three and there's a couple others I've EDC'd through time, you know, because I've tried just about every ED, every knife that Cold Steel makes for EDC. I've tried, you know, I, I've tried and I own just about every Triad model, at least one of every Triad model, model that's that's ever been made by Cold Steel. And these are the ones I thinned it down to the ones I actually really like to carry, carry and use because to me size and weight and all that does matter. <laughs> And if something's too big, it's too heavy, then it pulls down my pants. I got a flat butt. Yep, I'm a black guy with a flat butt. Flat butt. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it doesn't work for me. So knives too heavy, you know, aren't comfortable for me to carry just because they pull down my pants. They weigh down my pants. Not because they're they're hard to conceal or anything like that. For example, like the extra large um, Espada, the one I just received the other day. I carried it for a couple of days. And uh, it's easy. It's easy to carry. It's no, you know, it's no doubt it's not easy to carry. But it's just a little bit too big, and it pulls pulls on my pants. And I know that I have it all the time. And you know, for you know, if I was in a zombie apocalypse or whatever, or, or something like that, the end of the world scenario, or you know, some sort of disaster scenario, that wouldn't matter to me how heavy it was. What would matter to me is like you know what it can do. But for every day and in a non-apocalyptic situation. I like to carry things that don't weigh down my pants and things I sort of forget that are in my pocket. And all these knives fall in that category, even the big ones. The, these are the two big ones I found that are the easiest to carry. These two right here. But anyway, let's go over them. First off, the oldest one in this box. I don't even know what year I bought this. It was back in between, it had between, I don't know, what, 2005 and... 2009 or something like that. I don't know when these came out, but I bought it when they first came out. So whenever this one first came out, this is when I first got it. And I, I used, I carried it extensively. I used to carry this every day, every day. I used it so much, I ended up scratching it all up and I polished out the blade. It's starting to get kind of scratched up again, but it's, it still looks good. Let's see if I wipe it down a little bit for you. Still looks good. But this one's been resharp and reprofiled a lot. You know, with Oz 8, that's what you have to do. It requires a lot of maintenance if you use it. And I use this like a regular pocket knife to co cut open packages, boxes, whatever I had to use it for. And believe it or not, it's good for all that. <laughs> this is actually a really good knife. It's good for a lot of things. You could use it like a cubiton. You know, do do pressure pressure holds on it. It's excellent for that. And it's super fast. I think this is the fastest one that Cold Steel makes. Out of all their knives, I bet you it's even faster than the new Assisted Swift. <laughs> I don't think there's too many knives that are faster than this one. And you know, it's like, and if you want if you want to get a tie light that's really fast to open, get one of the ones with this kind of handle. 
because the, the aluminum handle ones with the little holes, you know, I have several of those too, and you don't see them in this box. And the reason why is because it's hard to get a good grip or purchase on them if you want to flick it flat, flick it fast. And this one, you just put your finger down this little, in this little hole right here, right there. That's what I do. And it just holds it in place. It ain't going nowhere. And so you can flick it any way you want to. You know? Boom. You see right, right, right in front of the clip. Help us really fast. It's one of my favorites. Now, I don't really carry it that much more, that much anymore, because I've moved on to triads. And that's what I was telling Giancarlo. But I still love this blade. And it's like one of my ones like I like to fondle around the house. Like if I'm on the computer talking to people or whatever, I sit, let some sit down and I'll just flip this one open and play with it. This one right here, I really like it because it's the lightest. It's lighter. This is the lightest mega folder that Cold Steel makes. The holdout. The holdout one. Let me wipe this blade off. And to me. For all you preppers and people that are into prepping and, and, and uh, preparing for you know survival and stuff like that, this would be a good one to put in your backpack. And the reason why is that I use this all the time whenever I have to cut meat or butcher meat. It, it's, it works better than my, um, my meat cleavers and stuff like that I have in my kitchen that I bought just for meat processing. This one works better. This is an Oz 8 blade. And one thing that's cool about Oz 8, you can get it razor sharp. Razor sharp. You don't have to be a professional knife sharpener to be able to do that either. To me, Oz 8A is like the easiest steel on the planet to sharpen. And, it, and, it, and you can get a, a, a super good razor sharp, sharp sharp edge on it. And this just glides through me. With this big full flat ground and, and, it, and the blade being 3.8 millimeters thick, it's not too thick. It just slices through meat, meat, ribs, everything. Any, you know, chickens. You have to, you know, cut chicken, a whole chicken in the in the, in the pieces. It it works great for all of that. To me, it's an excellent meat processing knife. <laughs> and that's what the Scottish skin do was was all about. It was it was used for utility purposes. You know, for preparing meat and everything like that. And also was a last ditch um, weapon. So you know, it was, that's the meat. That's the sort of the use that was sort of you know meant to be serving. I love that I love this design. And I put it off for several years. I didn't get it when it first came out. I put it off for several years because I kept looking at this handle. I said, you know what, your hand if you got in a combat situation and you had to you know you had to stab something or, or you know pierce something, your hand might slide forward up onto the blade and cut yourself. But I found out after you know getting one of these when they when they went on clearance, I got a serrated version of this and I got really cheap. And I got it, and when I received it, I held the handle. You know what? This handle ain't going nowhere because if you got a proper grip on this thing, your hand can't go for it because it slims to the back and widens to the front. And so, in order to go to, to slide forward, you have to let go and so and slide forward. It's not you got a perfectly good grip, especially with this super grippy G10. You 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 will not lose your grip on this one. And these and Oz 8A, I think, are just fine. You know, for what I use it for, it works great for what I use it for. I don't have any qualms. You know, I don't do wood crafting and all that kind of stuff with it. I use it for meat, <laughs> for cutting flesh. It likes to cut flesh. But uh, it works great for that. And it's easy to, you know, strop and resharpen and get back to razor sharp edge. It works perfect. I think I think Oz 8A is, is good kitchen, kitchen steel. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on to the next one. It's one of my favorites. Oh, and this one's super flat. And super easy to conceal. I like to carry it inside inside my vest jacket. If I go on a long run or whatever, I want to carry a big knife. I'll take this one. That's mainly why I got the holdouts for it. Was to sit inside my um, leather vest jacket from a motorcycle jacket. And this one sits inside and it conceals. Because now you know I usually like the ones 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 I carry in my pocket. I usually like to have them be the wave ones. The ones that aren't waves, I usually put them in. You know, like they, they're for like deep pocket carry to me. You know, when they're not clipped to my um, pants, or whatever. Like a lot of small ones that you'll, I'll talk about, I put those inside my jacket pockets. You know, my outer jacket pocket. I'm riding a bike, so I have one in my pocket, and uh, 
you know, if, if I'm wearing a jacket, because my, my jacket, the, it doesn't have the big gun vest pockets on the inside, so it doesn't really work. So the big giant blades don't really work on that. On that. So smaller blades, like the ones with three and a half inch, inch um, length to about four inch length work just fine. And a motorcycle jacket pocket. And so, because I usually like to carry two knives. I used to like to carry one in my one in my you know front right pocket for quick access, one in my one in my jacket pocket, one in my vest pocket. And if I'm not wearing a jacket or vest, I'll probably you know I'll carry like you know a small knife in my um, backpack or fanny pack. But anyway, let's move on. This is one I carry all the time, and this my, I personalized it. All the knives I carry, I tend to personalize because they're mine and they're getting used and. They won't never be collectors because, well, you know, I guess they could be collectors or whatever, but to me, they're not collectors. To me, they're users. And so I polish them and change the way that they look a lot of times. This one is my favorite big knife for, this is my favorite big fighter. The grip on this is awesome. The extra large towel war. And this one too, you know, I'm perfectly happy with this, the Oz 8 version. It stays sharp. You know, this one I don't use for anything really. I just carry it. And so I'm not really worried about the, you know, edge, super, having super duper edge retention on it. This one works just fine for how I use it. And it's, it's just a self-defense knife for me. And I feel like I need a big knife. And this is one I like to carry because it's not too heavy. It's not too heavy. I don't like real heavy knives, but it does have size and it does have reach. And it's about the biggest and biggest one I like to carry for carry. I've had this one since the Tower Wars first came out. When I first saw this, I fell in love with that bike right away. <laughs> Excellent knife. This one's been totally polished internally because they had some issues with some burrs on on the lock bar and i started to send it back but you know I, 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 after looking i thought you know i could fix this you know all you do is just you know smooth out the burrs you know i did it with a block did it on a black flat surface so you know i didn't mess up the in the alignment of the blade or anything like that it's just perfect and that's how it's been ever since and it functions perfectly at first it used to go into um lock mode where you couldn't unlock it but, you know after after I took deburred it and stuff like that it works fine I've been carrying it for a lot of years now well not a lot of years a couple of years ever since the towel wars came out and it's been about two or three years I don't know something like that excellent knife highly recommend it and here's a smaller version of the same knife and this one I like to carry you know the, the, this size of knife, the four inch blade, the three and a half to four inch blade, um, four and a half to five inch handles are usually my favorite size knife for EDC, for everyday EDC, knives that I carry all the time. And the reason for that is that, you know, I don't usually feel like I need a big giant knife. And, you know, just this is all I need. You know, it's good. And this one I use for utility. This one I'm probably getting CTS. This will be one of the ones that I will get in a CTS XHP in the future because I actually do use this for a lot of utility stuff and I, I've, I've had to resharpen it a lot and stuff like that. But this style of blade, just like the holdout, it holds its edge a little bit better with the Oz 8. I think the Oz 8 works better with the full flat grains a little bit better, if you ask me. They, 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 they hold their edge a little bit better. This one looks like it needs to be resharpened now a little bit. <laughs> I'm looking at the edge. That's that one. Another excellent knife. This is one of my new ones. The Black Talon. The Black Talon 2. And this is one that's been getting the most pocket time lately. I absolutely love this knife. It's lightweight, thin. Three and a half millimeter blade. Nice all the way up to the tip. I don't know if you can see that. Absolutely love this one. This is one of my favorites. All of these are my favorites, so, but you know. 
It's one of my newest favorites. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. And like a lot of the other ones, I polished, you know, the parts on it. Move on. And we can't forget the tough light. I love my large tough light. The large tough light. This is probably one of my most used blades. You could probably even see, I don't know if you can see that, but the edge has been resharpened so many times. It's starting to get a little bit uneven. I don't know how to explain that. It's just from wear. It's sharp right now, but you know, it's just like, you know, I've been wearing out, I've been using the steel on it. It's like, it's, I'm starting to lose steel on it. Probably have to get another one. But I'll keep using this one. I just get another one as a backup for when this one gets too bad. <laughs> but I absolutely love this knife. This is one of my favorite out of all the cold steel knives for a utility knife. I use, you know, it could be a self-defense knife too, because the grip on this is awesome. I think this is the most this this for a two and a half inch blade. I think it's got the best grip out of any two and a half inch blade I've ever held. I think the design on this is is awesome. And it's real simple. It's not an expensively made knife. It doesn't have a bunch of expensive materials. It's just a real simple little knife. You know, you can get them for under 30 bucks. And that's a really good knife. And you use it a lot. I wish they would make this one in CTSX HP or BD1 or something. A little bit a steel that holds the edge a little bit better than the Oz 8 does. Because this was one, if you get it, I'm sure you're going to use it a lot. I know I use mine a lot. I've used it for everything. And yeah, it's starting to lose steel. But still one of my favorites. Alright, the American Lawman. This is one of my favorite pocket knives. I like to carry in my jacket pocket. Why? Because the one I carry in my jacket pocket is usually used for utility purposes too. And um you know, because like the, the, my fighter, I usually put my front right pocket. And that'll be like a serrated blade or something like that. Now, anyway. Because I'm in the serrated blades this year with the CTS HP. I didn't really like the serrated blades too much with the Oz 8 because the serrated, the serrated edges would get dull and stuff and it was hard to resharpen. You know, you, you know, like, you know I'm, I know you, there's people that know how to do it really good, but I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not proficient at doing um, serrated edges yet. Of course, I haven't worked with them that much, but that was, that's, that was a big turnoff for the serrated edges for me with the Oz 8 because I thought the steel was too soft for serrations. But now with the CTS XHP, they work fine. But this is one of my favorite for a utility knife. This one I would like to have in CTS XHP also. For the same reasons I've, I've stated before. I think this would be an excellent knife to have an XCTS8 XHP. And this is like a baby A10. It's a total Andrew Demko design. That's a real original looking Andrew Demko design. <clears throat> Here goes another one of my pocket knives I have to carry inside my vest. My leather vest. Usually this one doesn't even stay in this drawer. It just stays inside my vest all the time. It, you know, I just pulled it out my vest and brought it out here so you guys could see it. But this one just stays in my vest, my leather vest. I wear the most when I ride my bike. In the inside pocket. And this would be my utility knife, slash self defense knife, emergency knife, whatever. Carry inside my vest. Backup knife. But if I actually have to cut something, I use this. I would like to have this one in CTSX HP also. And, you know, I polished it, just like I did the big one. It's been all polished out. Excellent knife. Highly recommend it. Here's another one I like to carry in my pocket. This was a stonewashed Espada that I polished. I got this one used on eBay. It had been beaten up and abused. <laughs> And it came home to me, and I took care of it, repaired it, and hot, and, uh, and brought it back to life. Made it look better than new. I polished it all the way out, polished all the scratches out of it that was on it. 
that's why I polished out the the um, what do you call it the the, the stone wash finish because they had a lot of scratches and marks. Whoever had this before really abused it, really used it hard. But you can't tell now. Went through my went through my doctoring. I absolutely love it. I carry this all the time in the winter time usually. And it fits great inside my leather jacket pocket. Okay, let's see what we got here. This is the first triad I ever bought. Right here. I think it was like the end of 2010 or something like that that I bought this. When they first came out with the Voyagers. I can't remember if it was 2010. I think it was 2010. I don't think it was 2009. I think it was 2010. Like almost 2011. But uh, that's the first triad lock I bought. And that's when this is the knife that started my love affair with triads. Before this, I used to carry bench maids and, and uh, AFCKs and and others, and I used to carry the the, the tie light. But I carried a, a I used to like the access lock from bench made, and then but the triad took over that spot. I still like the access lock. But the reason, you know, bench maids are so expensive, you know, it makes it not fun to, you know, because you can, you can buy for the price of one bench made, you know, when they were making the Oz 8 blades anyway, you can buy, probably buy about like four knives, <laughs> four or five knives for the price of one bench made. You know, sure the bench made has a lot better materials, you know, like the, the steel is a lot better, you know, the, most of them have like 154 CM or, or M2 or, uh, I don't know, D2, you know, they have, lot, you know, super steels that they use a lot, nice steels, but they charge for them too, though. You know, most of the knives I like, they're made by Benchmade, start at about 150 bucks and go to about 300. And I don't like to spend that much money on a folder. I'd rather spend less than 100 if possible. You know, lately I've been spending right around 100 on the ones I like. I don't, I don't plan on going too much higher than that, though. It's sort of like my limit. I'm sort of like at my limit with what the prices are nowadays. And as you can see, I don't really need any more, so... <laughs> I just get them because I like them or want them or want to try them out. That's why I have so many of them, because I've, I've tried out every model. Every model that Cold Steel makes, I've tried out. And I own at least one of every model. And these are the ones I like the best. But this one right here is one of my all-time favorite. I got all of the Voyagers, you know, all the different blade types, you know, from from the Vaquero to the to the uh, Clip blade or the Bowie blade to the Tontos. And um, the Tonto's my favorite. That's why it's in my box. Because I bought a full set of these at the same time when they first came out. I got three XLs and three larges. All in all in the different blade types. And this is the one I carry. I even bought another one of these to replace another one that, that's in my collection, so I could have one that's in my collection that's not used. And this is the one I use. This one I'll probably get in CTS BD1. It will probably get replaced with the CTS BD1 one. And it'll be off into the retirement retirement community in the in the in the safe. <laughs> The knife retirement community in the safe. It served me well. Here's another one I would like to have in CTS BD1. I, I like to get this one, the new OD green handles. They're making this with OD green handles. The, with the DLC finish. The, 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 the coating that was on these was really crappy. And I didn't like it. And so I took it off with um, clean, clean strip. You get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. And it's a paint remover, industrial paint remover. It, it just takes off the, the Teflon coating really easy. You just let it sit in it. You soak it, let it sit for about a half an hour or whatever, come back and just wipe it off. And that way you don't put any scratch marks or anything in the blade and, and you have your full stone wash finish underneath it and it's not, it's not messed up. It looks really beautiful. Don't use scrapers and stuff. I've tried that before and I scraped up a blade. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend just using a paint remover, a really strong industrial strength paint remover for the Teflon. I don't think it'd work on the DLC if you want to remove the DLC, but why buy one with DLC if you want to remove it? DLC is a really nice coating.
And this one's been in my rotation for a long time too now. Because I bought this when it first came out. And I think that was, I don't know what year. 2011 or something like that. It's been three or four years I've been carrying this. This one right here, my first counterpoint. And like the tie light, I carried this one a lot. Because you know I like stiletto style knives. I don't know, just me. And that's what this is to me. I know it's supposed to be like a boot knife or something like that. But to me it looks like a... It looks like a Russian Mikov. That's what it looks like. It's about the same size as a Russian Mikov. Or a Czechoslovakian uh, Mikov. If, you know, if you're familiar with those. It's like almost the exact same size, exact same blade shape, handle shape, everything. It's pretty much close to a Mikov. And that's what it reminds me of. I love the Mikov, but it's an automatic, the one that I have. And so I don't carry it. Can't carry autos in California. But I can't carry this. I love it. And this one I polished up the blade. Got all scratched up. Just like I did the other one. All the internals, everything's been polished. But that's another one that's in my rotation. My army dog tags. All right, they bring good luck to my blades. Cause my blades are soldiers. Okay, here we go. This is another wave one. This is my favorite utility wave knife. <laughs> a lot of times when I'm working on the bike or something, this will be in my pocket because this works great on cutting fuel lines, oil lines, all that kind of stuff. It works. It's, the edge on it is like, and you can really press on it. You can put a lot of, lot of pressure on it because it's really a heavy duty knife. It's got four millimeter um, thick blade and a lock bar. And it's like a super strong little blade. The little Raja 3. It's my favorite Raja. And this one I want CTS BD1 also. So I think you've seen what I'm talking about, Giancarlo, that there's some knives I want to, that there's a lot of knives I want to get. And I need to raise the money for them, so I'll probably sell some knives. Some of my old ones I don't use. I won't sell none of these. Because all the knives I ever carry, I never sell them. They just go in my safe. When they get old, I retire them. But I don't like to sell them because I just like to keep them because it's, it's like... To me, like when you carry something and it's on your possession, it's like a little bit of you goes into it. It's like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a little bit of your soul, a little bit of your spirit. I'm getting kind of metaphysical now, but but that's why I sort of feel. You know, it's like part of you's in it. This is my AK. I love the AK. AK is an excellent little combat knife. You got the aluminum butt cap or the aluminum back piece. It's good for a bludgeoning weapon. The grip on it's like a Spartan. It holds your hand in, in place. Your hand doesn't go anywhere with this thing. It's got the wave feature. It's got a nice strong looking blade. And they say this is three and a half millimeter, but it's really 3.8 millimeters, almost four millimeters thick. So it's a little bit, so it's thicker than a three and a half millimeter if you're ever wondered. I actually measured it because I thought it was thicker than the three and a half millimeters and it was. It's a 3.8 millimeter. They probably use the same blade stock that they use to make the, the large holdout for this because large holdout is 3.8 millimeters too. That's my guess. I don't know why they say it's a three and a half millimeter. They should say it's a 3.8. But this is a heavy duty little knife. You know, for such a little knife, it packs a big punch. I love it. And this one, like the like the recon, it had the crappy Teflon coating, and I did the same thing, same treatment on this one with the with the clean strip, and stripped it all the way out. Did the lock bar, the blade, and the um, the wave feature on it, and left everything else, all the hardware and black finish. Another one I like to carry, and the newest edition just came today. Just came today. The newest one. Been waiting for it. The Tiger Claw. Karambat. 
serrated version. I absolutely love this. It's like, this is not a three inch blade though. They advertise it as a three inch blade. It's really in between three and three quarters. The, the cutting edge is three and three quarters from the, from the, from the base of the cutting edge to the tip of the cutting edge is three and three quarters inches so it's over three inches and if you go from the the handle scale to the tip it's three and a half inches it's just shy of three and a half inches so all you wondering how long this is i've heard a lot of people say oh i want a three inch blade you know they should make a little bit longer well it is a little bit longer <laughs> it's not it's not it's not a three inch blade it's not a true three inch blade I love it. I'm waiting for it. They didn't come out with a new lock style for this one, but I still like this lock. All right. So those are my EDCs, and this is my EDC drawer. These are the ones I carry for all you, for you all to see. I haven't updated it in a, maybe a year or two now, so now you guys still see what I'm carrying. And these are my these are knives I carry every day. One of these knives will be in my pocket. And the only thing that's going to change on it is a, a, a Swift is going to be in here. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Probably like right here, maybe move this around. But I'm getting the, the new uh, DLC Swift. And that'll be it. And the other ones that might end up coming in here in the future is the ones that replace these with the new steels. The big ones, I'm leaving them alone. But I do want that one. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. These two, that all. So there's a lot of them I want to replace. You know, I'll do it. I'll do it over. You know, I'll take my time over the next year or so. But eventually, they'll all be replaced with the new steel knives. I like the new steels better. And these will be all retired. The ones that that I'm replacing will be retired and put into the safe. They go into the knife retirement community. All right. That's it. Stiletto out. Peace.